Hello and welcome to Atoma Workshop. Today I'm going to be making Arthur Morgan's hat from Red Dead Redemption 2 and I'm going to be making it out of foam. To start the hat I needed a template but as it turned out I didn't have to go looking for long as I happened to have this Kamui cosplay cowboy hat template in my folder of templates and patterns that I figured would work great. Although this wasn't a perfect fit for Arthur's hat it was a good enough start to get me going. With this in mind, before marking out anything on the foam, I decided to make a little change to the pattern. Originally it called for four quadrants to make up the brim of the hat, however it appeared to me that I could make it into two pieces and reduce the overall amount of seams. So I taped together the two side pieces of the brim pattern. At the time, I thought because of the angle of the front and back joints, I would not be able to make it into one whole piece, but I have since learned I could probably have got away with it and had zero seams on the brim. With that change made, I marked out my template on some 2mm Polyprops CF150 foam, which was also a change from the original Kamui designed pieces. I chose this more rigid CF150 foam because originally this pattern called for 5mm, but while researching this project, I discovered that a cowboy hat traditionally uses a 2-3mm to leather, and so I wanted to try and get it a little closer to that. In theory, this thinner foam would sacrifice a lot of rigidity, and I had no idea if this was going to work, so I was super nervous the whole time I was making this. If it were to go wrong, I could always have gone back to 5mm and rounded over the edge to make it look thinner than it was. Once I had all my pieces cut, it was time for the glue up. As usual for a foam build, I used contact cement. This works by spreading the glue on the two pieces you want to have join and then leaving it to set up for 5-10 to 10 minutes. Basically you want the glue to feel tacky but not wet. And then you bring the two pieces together and it should be an instant bond. I joined up the brim first, then the crown, then the teardrop shape that caps off the crown. I then pushed the teardrop inward to create the indent in the top. Then I had to join the crown to the brim, but to make sure the two parts met up well, I put a bevel on the bottom edge of the crown and the inside edge of the brim using my rotary tool and a sanding bit. This worked really well, but I did end up with a lot of glue sticking out as it was really difficult to just get it on that thin edge. At this point, I could put the hat on and was pretty happy with it. However, I began to think that the crown was a little short to match Arthur's. Nevertheless, I pressed on, for now. The next step was to do a little bit of shaping to get it looking more like Arthur's hat. His hat has the sides of the brim sticking up, the right side as you're wearing it should stick up a little more than the left, the front should also stick up a little bit but not as much, and the back should slope downward. The shaping was really hard to do as every time I would get one part done, I would have to heat up the foam again to do the next part which would cause the whole thing to relax and lose the shape I just did. Eventually, I managed to find a decent technique for doing the curling on this. The best way I could find was to curl it more than I wanted, and then that would mean when I would heat it up again, it would relax into the correct position as opposed to back to flat like it was doing before. With that done, I wanted to tidy things up a bit by giving everything a bit of a round over. Again with a sanding drum in my rotary tool, I went over the top and bottom side of the edges on the brim. But upon completing this, I had had enough of looking at that incorrect height of the crown. I have been staring at this for too long. I, I'm, I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to put in a nicer, taller one. It really bugs me. I've been staring at it so much and it just bugs me so much. It needs to just be a few centimeters taller, I think. Off camera, I went and remade the hat. Essentially exactly the same, but with the taller crown I made by modifying the pattern. So, how I did the extension. Basically, what I did was cut a line across both pieces around the same height, just so they could line up a bit better, uh, you know, roughly correctly um, in the end. And I cut, basically cut a line going across it and then I moved the bottom piece down about four centimeters for each one and then taped a new piece of paper underneath them so that I could draw a continuing curve to try and keep the same rough shape of it and that they so they could uh, you know stick together still and that worked really well. Um, it wasn't that hard, uh, I just kind of made it up as it was going and it worked out. It, you know, it looks really good, it looks as it should um, across the whole thing, so I'm really happy uh, how that turned out. 
With my newly made crown in hand, I continued where I left off. Arthur Morgan's hat is incredibly beat up and so I wanted to add a lot of textures to it to make it feel more used. The first of these textures I again used my heat gun for and I warmed up the foam to then press in some foil. This leaves a lot of little indentations on the surface and thanks to the foil being so pliable, each time you press it in it's a little different so it looks pretty random. If I had thought about this ahead of time, I actually could have done this while I was shaping and saved a bit of time, so if you do this, keep that in mind. As another bit of texturing, I also used my rotary tool with that sanding bit again in order to add damage. To start, I added in the gouges and spots I could see in photos of Arthur. For instance, there was a large gouge going right across the front and a couple of deep grooves near that. I also then held my rotary tool very loosely and just let it swing in and hit the hat randomly to add random shallow lines and gouges. This looks dramatic at this point, but as you'll see later on, it mostly gets covered and in the end looks like some light damage from everyday use. Just be careful not to overdo it if you make one. With that done, the hat was ready to have the final layer of texture, as well as sealing the phone to be ready for paint. To achieve this, I used Mod Podge, which is the same way I sealed my Makoto Yuki sword. I found it worked very well for that, so I wanted to use it again. Mod Podge thickens up as you are brushing it on, and as a result, it's generally very hard to avoid brush strokes with. But in this instance, I used that to my advantage. By stippling on the Mod Podge with a sponge brush, I was able to create small pips on the surface to give a little more of a leather-like texture. In the end, I stippled on two coats of Mod Podge to get a good thick layer. As a bonus, this also stiffened up the foam a lot and made it hold its shape a lot better, so my 2mm foam experiment worked out. To finish off the Mod Podge process, I also bent and squished the foam around a lot. As Mod Podge isn't particularly flexible, this generated cracks across the whole surface just like you would see on really old worn leather. This again looks very dramatic, but improves after a bit of paint. Speaking of paint, the hat was now ready for a base coat. For this, I used some Polyprop's Hex Acrylic Paint in a glossy black, which may have been a mistake, as worn leather shouldn't be very shiny. In future, I would use satin or matte black. I brushed this paint on with a mop brush, and it covered very well. I really like these Hex Acrylic Paints for this sort of job. A little goes a long way. You can see with this coat on, all that texture added beforehand really comes out and looks amazing. But we aren't done yet. To call out the texture even more, as well as dull the shine a little and add some color variants, I mixed up a bit of white with black to make a dark gray and did a heavy dry brush pass over the whole hat. To do this, you just need to get the paint on your brush and then wipe most of it away on a paper towel to mostly dry it out again. This leaves a little paint still on the brush which you then use on your piece. I'm going very heavy in this instance to get better coverage and then following it up with a damp paper towel to wipe up any excess and knock it back a little so as not to go too far and turn the whole thing a solid grey. The Passer Grey did a great job to call out the texture even more, but as you can see it sadly didn't knock back the shine very much. Despite this though, I pressed on. I could see in the references some hints of brown wherever there was damage, so the next task was to add a little bit of Vallejo Leather Brown to the deep gouges I put in the surface earlier, as well as on the edge to simulate wear and tear, where I guess whatever turned the hat black had come off. With every step I added, I was happier and happier with this hat. It was looking better and better with every texture layer I did, and it was really feeling like Arthur Morgan's hat. The only issue I was really having with it was how shiny it was. It just wouldn't go away, but I had a couple of more options for how to get rid of it. As a final pass of weathering, I got some brown paint and wiped it all over the surfaces and into the crevices to dirty it all up. This still didn't work to dull the shine though. Also off camera, I tried hitting it with a matte clear spray paint and that still could not knock it back, so sadly this is just the way it will be. I could also easily repaint this at some point, but I am pretty darn happy with it as is, so I am willing to overlook the shine. With all that done, the base hat was complete, but there is one more part of Arthur's hat to worry about before I'm done. He of course has the leather braid going around the crown, which I am also going to have to make out of foam. To make this, I used essentially the same technique you would use for actual leather. If you want more detail on how I'm doing it exactly, I picked it up from a great video by Brittany Davis on YouTube, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. I used four 3 meter long, 1 centimeter wide strips of the foam to create the braid. You can't buy foam that long, at least not from Polyprops, so I cut 12 1 meter long, 1 centimeter wide strands and glued three of those strands together four times to end up with four 3 meter strands. This allowed enough braid to wrap around the hat twice, but I still needed to be careful as if I pulled it too much I could tear the foam due to how thin it was and the extra glue seems to get the right length. 
making this braid took me almost an hour, but I think the results were worth it. I think I could have saved a little bit of time as the braid ended up a bit too long and I had to cut it down, but aside from that, the only hiccup I had was right at the end. I'm not very good at tying knots and despite looking up a guide, I wasn't confident it would stay. So I dabbed on a little bit of super glue into the knot to really lock it into place. I also wrapped and glued one of the four strands around the knot as Arthur's only shows three on the back anyway. Once I had this ready, I wrapped it around the hat to double check the fit and create the ring that retains all this. I made the ring by cutting off a section of the extra length of braid from earlier and glued it end to end. I then slid it on and glued it to the braid on the hat, leaving me with this. Now finally, I needed to make this braid look like leather, so on to paint. I did a base coat of a satin dark brown. The aim was to get complete coverage on this coat so that I would have brown in any spots I missed later on with the lighter paints. Speaking of those lighter paints, once the base coat was dry, I came in with more of that Vallejo leather brown and covered it in almost all of the base coat. This may seem too bright at this point, but stay with me, it will get better soon. Again, after waiting for that coat to dry, I did some more dry brushing. Using a raw sienna and yellow ochre, I lightly hit the edges with my two colors to give it more variation and wear. This left me with a really cool looking braid that actually looked like leather. But wait, there's more. As I mentioned, this is much too bright to be Arthur's. We need to fix that. To darken the braid, I poured out some black paint and heavily watered it down. I spread this all over the braid and then immediately came in with a paper towel to wipe it away. As you can see, this massively changed the look of the braid and became much closer to what we can see in the game. With the paint all dry, I put the braid back on the hat and it was all finished. And so, final thoughts. Honestly, I am ecstatic with this. Every time I see the hat, on my shelf or every time I put it on it makes me laugh it makes me giggle I, I just I can't get over it it looks awesome to me it looks like Arthur Morgan's hat more than anything I'm just pleased that it does um, and I love the braid the braid I'm glad I put all that time and effort into making the braid it just makes it look so legit and so cool uh, I love it um, aside from the shine which I've complained about which by the way Polly Pops props to you for uh, such a really sturdy gloss that I could not get rid of. Uh, even a matte spray paint couldn't kill that gloss. It's such a strong gloss. So if you're looking for a really good gloss, I, I would say uh, Poly Props has a really good gloss. Um, I think the seams are a bit messy. That's the only other thing. Um, the uh, side and front stuff, you know, is it kind of bugs me. I think I could have made the brim in one piece and it would have maybe come out a little bit nicer. And I think I could have made the uh, crown in two pieces to minimize those seams. I don't think there's anything I could really do about the back um, But uh, I, other than that, I absolutely love the hat. I, I couldn't be happier in a future iteration I might mess with it, but uh, for now I am very happy with it um, Thank you for anybody who made it this far in the video If you did be sure to leave a, a like a subscribe comment all that youtube -y good stuff uh, maybe you have something you want me to make from your favorite series or maybe from Red Dead Redemption. Maybe Red Dead Redemption is your favorite series. I want to hear about it in the comments. Please let me know and I'll definitely consider it. So uh, yeah, without further ado, thank you very much again for watching. I will see you next time.